we are going to take the information, we're going to take our previous knowledge that the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over x equals 1. I am not giving you that formula, I expect that you memorize that formula as well. Okay. So, we go here and we're like, alright, well what can I do? Now notice this is something plus something over this over one thing. Not over something being added. When it's two things on the top, one thing on the bottom, I can rewrite this like this, guys. I know it looks weird, but if I gave you this, you would automatically go to this. So it shouldn't be unfamiliar to go from this to this. The benefit to going to this is you're like, oh, this is just one half. <clears throat> and now watch this right here. And then isn't it also one half? Hold on, let's see. so we're gonna go like this. So then we're gonna do, I'm gonna rewrite this as one half times the sine of x over x. This is the same thing as this. But the problem is, is that if we went to here, you'd be like, oh yeah, like I could go from here, like from this fraction to this fraction, like no problem, because all I did was multiply the top and the bottom. <clears throat> Going from here to here, you had to multiply the top and the bottom by x, but I mean, you're trying to find a common denominator, so like maybe you get that. Once you get to here, then you're here. So it's just getting down to these steps right here. Now remember when we talked about, we're still doing the limit right here, guys. It's over here. We're doing the limit as x approaches zero. We looked at that page and we saw that we could take the limit of all these different things right here individually. So this is the limit of still all that stuff right there. So now we're gonna do the limit as x approaches zero of one half, plus we're going to do the limit as x approaches zero of basically one half times this stuff right here. Okay? And then there's no place to plug a zero in, so that's just one half. When I plug a zero in here, we know based on this formula that that's one, so this is plus one half times one, which is just one. And then we're done. We're done. We're done with the entire test. Okay. Almost. Yeah, the question's 13. Okay. Yeah. If you say so, so do question 13, guys. Yeah. Question. Are we going to have to write the limit of x equals 0? Yeah. Okay. You'll just have to write it like one more time right before you plug zero. So notice like on a bunch of these, I don't write it every single step, I just write it right before I do it. Okay, so right here guys, we cannot do this same concept. We cannot like be like, this is sine of x over 2x squared, and then sine of x over negative x. It doesn't work like that. And only when there's one thing that's on there. So what we can do, however, is we can actually factor out an x. So we can do this as like 1 over x times sine of x over, and this would be 2x minus 1, right? Pretty good right there. And now, we're going to do some crazy stuff, guys. We're going to swap the denominators. We'll switch a root with the denominators. Okay? Watch the I'm going to take that denominator and put it here. Why would I do that? Because I know sine of x over x is 1. So I'm just going to redo this right here. So this is 1 over 2x minus 1 times sine of x over x. And remember, there, guys, this is the limit as x approaches zero. <clears throat> so we found out that if we have the limit as x approaches zero of this, we really just have the limit as x approaches zero of one over two x minus one times the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x. So this is one, so that's times one. When I plug in a zero in here, that's one divided by negative one, which is negative one, and negative one times one is negative one. That's done. One. Test done. Test Do it out. Do it out. Because I kind of deleted it and then realized that I didn't have to. I don't even know when you guys did five or six. What's up, dude? So is that on the uh, 